Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad. Recently, I got a few questions from viewers of this channel about stenting of the heart. So today, in this video, I will talk about the questions I received and I will answer them so all the viewers would benefit from the information. For those who are new to my channel, I am a board certified cardiologist and interventional cardiologist. And here on this channel, you will find lots of education about heart health and heart disease. So if you are interested, don't forget to subscribe and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. So let's get started with this video about stenting of the arteries of the heart. In individuals who suffer from coronary artery disease, the arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle get clogged with fatty deposits called plaques. These plaques reduce the flow of blood to the heart muscle, which can in turn cause chest pain or discomfort, especially during exertion or emotional stress. Chest pain or discomfort arising from the heart due to reduced blood supply is referred to as angina pectoris. There are two main types of treatments for people with chest pain. The first is medical therapy, meaning treatment with medications. The second is interventional treatment with procedures to open or bypass the narrowed artery or arteries. The goals of these treatments are to improve the person's quality of life and to reduce the chest pain symptoms. Medications may also delay progression of the disease and thereby prolong life. Here are some of the questions I received. What is stenting? Stenting, also known as percutaneous coronary intervention, also abbreviated as PCI, is a procedure that uses a flexible plastic catheter which is a thin tube to dilate the narrowed arteries in the heart. A metal stent, which is a metal scaffolding, is then placed at the site of the major blocking to hold the artery open. In this way, stenting helps to restore and preserve blood flow to the heart muscle. Why do I need stenting? Chest pain that is the result of decreased oxygen-rich blood supply to a portion of the muscle of the heart, called angina pectoris, is often referred to simply as angina. Angina is a signal that the heart muscle is not getting enough blood flow, specifically enough oxygen. Lack of oxygen is called ischemia. Blood flow is most often reduced by coronary artery disease, which causes narrowing of the coronary arteries that carry blood to the heart muscle. Narrowing in the coronary arteries occur as a result of calcium and fatty deposits called plaques, as can be seen here on the left side of the screen. A person with narrowed arteries may develop angina during activity, exercise, or any physical or mental stress that increases the heart's demand for blood. Angina can be stable or unstable. Angina is unstable when there is a change in the usual pattern, such as increase in frequency, severity, duration, or precipitating cause. Unstable angina may lead to damage to the heart muscle. The term acute coronary syndrome refers to people with unstable angina or a heart attack, and this condition requires immediate evaluation in the hospital. In severe cases, Heart attack can lead to heart failure or sudden cardiac death. Do I need stenting? Stenting of the coronary arteries may be recommended in addition to medical therapy for two groups of people with stable angina. People who have persistent and intolerable symptoms despite optimal medical treatment. People who have specific patterns of arterial narrowing and are at a high risk of either a heart attack 
or death. The usefulness of stenting depends upon the location and severity of the narrowing. Stenting is recommended when the coronary arterial narrowing is moderate to severe or when only one or two coronary arteries are severely narrowed. People with diabetes appear to have greater benefit from bypass surgery rather than stenting, especially if two or three coronary arteries are involved. A large amount of the heart muscle is in jeopardy or the left ventricular function is reduced. People who have extensive coronary heart disease, including a large number of narrowed coronary arteries or narrowing of the left main coronary artery, and those with poor pumping function of the heart, they tend to live longer when they have coronary artery bypass surgery rather than medical treatment or stenting. Some patients with blockages in more than one artery might require using both stenting and bypass surgery sequentially in order to achieve the best result. What are the benefits of stenting? For patients with chronic stable angina, placement of a stent may improve symptoms and exercise capacity, but does not reduce the risk of death or the risk of a heart attack when compared with patients in a full medical therapy. However, many individual factors influence the effectiveness of interventional treatment and its continued benefit over time. It is therefore important to discuss the realistic expectations for each of these procedures with your doctor. How is stenting performed? Stenting is an invasive procedure. I have two videos in this channel at Dr. Bolat Cardiology that explains them. The first is the cardiac catheterization surgery video, which is the initial diagnostic step before proceeding to stenting of the artery. The second video is the heart stent surgery, which explains the stenting procedure in detail. For those who are interested, I recommend reviewing these two videos in my channel. What are the complications of stenting? Complications are relatively infrequent. The most common complication include discomfort and bleeding at the puncture site where the catheter was inserted. Occasionally, the procedure creates a small tear called dissection of the internal layer of the coronary artery. Usually the tear is small and heals by itself. In some cases, the tear will need to be corrected with a stent. If the tear is severe, causing a blockage in blood flow in the artery or loss of blood around the heart, immediate treatment is given. This usually includes reinserting a catheter and putting in a stent. Rarely a person will need urgent bypass surgery, but this is necessary only in less than 1% of patients. Following stent placement, there may be minor elevation of cardiac enzymes, especially troponin, suggesting a small amount of damage as a result of the procedure. Unless the blood enzyme reaches a level that is clinically significant, which occurs in less than 1% of cases, this is of no consequence and is not considered a complication. What are the limitations of stenting? Although stenting restores blood flow and relieves symptoms in over 90% of patients, there is a risk of recurrent symptoms within the first six months, often due to recurrent narrowing of the artery or further narrowing at a separate site. Recurrent narrowing that is severe enough to cause symptoms occurs in about 30% of people who have the procedure to open the artery without stent placement, and it occurs in about 15% of people who have a bare metal stent, and in less than 10% of people who have a drug-coated stent. 
some coronary artery sites are more prone to recurrent narrowing than others. In addition, some conditions increase the risk of narrowing, potentially requiring a repeat catheterization or no reopening or bypass surgery of the narrowed segment. These conditions include diabetes, continued cigarette smoking, high blood pressure, diffusely narrowed arteries, high level of bad LDL cholesterol, narrowing in a major blood vessel that is at or near the beginning of a side branch, a blood vessel that has multiple stents placed, or in stents that have been placed in a vein graft that was placed during coronary artery bypass surgery. Recurrent symptoms can develop as a result of other vessels that become narrowed. Some vessels that are either very small or tortuous or have long-standing total blockages or have a calcified hardened lesion are more difficult to open. What happens after the procedure? Following the stenting procedure, the catheter is removed from the artery and pressure is applied to the area. In some cases, a pressure device is used to limit bleeding from the site. In other cases, the femoral artery is sealed with a special device at the time the catheter is removed. If axis uses the femoral artery, the patient must lie flat and remain still for a few hours to reduce the risk of bleeding. During this time, the patient will remain in a recovery area where the blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen level, temperature, and puncture site can be monitored frequently. As the sedative medication begins to wear off, pain medication may be given if needed. Some patients will remain in the hospital overnight after stenting. A friend or family member must be available to drive the patient home. Most patients are able to walk on the day after the procedure and can resume their normal activities, including returning to work within a week. Driving and heavy lifting and pushing or pulling is not allowed for a few days. A specific activity restriction should be discussed with the physician who performed the procedure. There are certain questions that you need to ask your doctor after the stenting procedure. These include, when do I restart my medications? Do I need any new medications? When should I see you again? What do I call if I have problems after I go home? How do I prevent blood clots in the stent? One of the most common complications that can develop after stent placement is the development of a blood clot inside the stent. This is called stent thrombosis. It is thought that the metal of the stent in contact with the blood leads to clotting. Stent thrombosis can potentially block blood flow to the heart, causing a heart attack or even death. Stent thrombosis can occur within 24 hours, 30 days, or as late as one year or more after stent placement, although most episodes occur within 30 days. Fortunately, stent thrombosis is rare because aspirin and a second antiplatelet medication that prevents clotting are given before and after stent placement. Aspirin is to be continued for life, whereas the second antiplatelet medication is usually given for six to 12 months, and sometimes longer. These medications should not be stopped without the approval of your cardiologist. When do I ask for help after the stenting procedure? After having a stent placed, you will need to seek immediate medical assistance if chest pain develops and it is not relieved with one dose of nitroglycerin under the tongue, the puncture site becomes very painful or swollen, warm, or bleeds more than a few drops, or drains pus. A fever higher than 104 Fahrenheit, uh, which is 38 degrees centigrade, develops. I hope that the questions I just answered will help you understand about the heart stenting procedure. 
If you have any question about what I presented to you today, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comment section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Dr. Bolad and send me a private direct message and I will reply to you. If you found value in this video, then please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.